Welcome everyone to Art Chats con la Mitotera. I'm your host, Mel Dominguez. Uh, today we have a special guest. His name is Ruben Moreno. He's a local artist. Yes, so I'm super excited to actually interview Ruben because uh, we've known each other for some time and it's it's been awesome to see what he's um he's created. Hey, what's up, Ruben? Hey Mel, what's up? <laughs> How's everything? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I just got home from work and uh, having a having a michelada, and I'm, I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So wait a minute, you're working right now? I am. Yes, I'm. I am a kind of an essential, kind of. <laughs> what, so you actually, would you leave your house to go to work, or you stay home and do something? Yeah. Um, since I'm at the museum and I'm working alone, um, I, they're having me go in because I, I can't do anything from home. And so I'm, I'm working like completely alone in a closed museum. It's weird. It's kind of like a, the night at the museum, you know, and yeah. like, I'm all alone in there and like, <laughs> it's kind of creepy sometimes. Um, oh but yeah, they have, they have me working on projects and exhibits and uh, things that are coming up in the fall hopefully we can be open for that oh my god that is that's super cool but super crazy i hope that it inspires you to to do some paintings <laughs> i know <laughs> there's there's been some surreal moments i i have to be honest I, it's been kind of trippy yeah I'm not gonna you know, now, I, now i'm intrigued you know <laughs> can we see what you do hey you know what for those of uh of the audience that don't know who Ruben Moreno is, I mean, tell us, where are you from? Okay, so, well, I, I'm, I'm a Tucson native. I grew up here. Uh, grew up in South Tucson, actually. Uh, I would spend my, my weekends with my Nana on the, on the north, like the north side, like Fort Lowell and First Avenue area. So it's like every weekend I would shoot up there. Um, but basically, my, my, family's, my family came here from Puebla and, and Sonora. And I'm like second generation American. I uh, went to Mission View and Pueblo High School. Also went two years to Tucson High. Um, right. But that's about it. I've been I've been doing art um, since like about the year 2000, and just trying to trying to do it. You know, trying to bring it. Oh my lord! I mean, for folks who don't know what you actually paint like. Um, I think you're really, really humble. I'm, I'm like, I've always, before I met you and I just saw your artwork, I was like, wow. Um, because you don't just paint, you actually tell a story. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, that is where my heart is. Like I was going to be a comic book artist. Like that, those were my like life aspirations as a child. And so when I saw that that wasn't going to happen for whatever reason, um, and I started painting, I just, I had to continue that, that drive to like tell a story. And I'm like super curious about, about all things. And so uh, that's, that's where my artwork is coming from, from telling a story or like depicting, depicting a lot of the struggles in the world, you know, like making sure that, that I'm kind of like filling in my role as like um, depicting, depicting like the struggles that we're going through and all the injustices, you know? But you go from like ink and pen to, I don't know, oil paints and like making your own scratch board. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, what? The, I think that that's what I like about you because we get to, we're living, like you're taking the perspective of what these social injustices are and you're, you're, you're conceptualizing it in a piece and we get to see your version of it. And my God, I you know what I I always man, you're dope. <laughs> oh, stop, stop, stop! <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. I feel the same about your work. Your work is like your work is like representing the people. It's like it's down here. It's not all pretentious and and you know you're 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 relating to everybody that you do work for. So that's that's super important. Then and on the same page, like that's what I'm trying to do too. Like. No, right it's on. Trying to do relatable art, you know, you know. Absolutely. Oh my God. I mean, just starting to talk to you, I'm like, I feel like I lost my place just because it's there's so many things I can talk to you about when it comes to that stuff. I'm like, oh my God. But you know what? For the folks who live in Tucson, Arizona, 
is there like a, a walking or a biking tour you can kind of give them of where they can actually see your art, your public art? Yeah, sure. It's uh, it's probably like really short, but you know, <laughs> hopefully I I plan to change that. I want to do more murals. That's in the bucket list. Um, I have an old mural downtown that's coming down soon. Um, mm -hmm. Some of you might know Solar Culture. Um, in front of Solar Culture, I did uh, I did a mural called the Celestial Couple, and it's the sun god and the moon god, and it's been there for like eight or nine years, it's seven or eight years. It's, it's a crazy amount of time, and it's super faded, and they're finally going to replace it. I'm going to bring it home. I'm actually going to, I'm going to restore it, and um, a friend of mine, Ernesto Samosa, he's a graphic arts teacher at, Tus at uh, Pueblo. He's gonna put it up in his class. So oh, I'm really excited about oh. that. Yeah. And um I have my one of my first murals is in South Tucson on Mission View on the um on the south east side. It's on the library wall. And I did that back in like the early nineties with a bunch of kids. And then I got invited to go back about seven or eight years ago to do another mural in on the Ramada in on the field, you know? So that was really cool. That was a fun, fun little project. So Mission View's got two murals and I unfortunately I have some murals that have been covered over. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, um, a lot of people recognize the Tucson mural on Speedway and Stone. Oh, yeah. So I did the letter, the letter N, it was the Azteca at the end. He's got a, he's like a flechador, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that, but this is perfect because there's folks who, you know, they like they want to get out and do a little exercise. So this can get them out there and go and check out some of the art that you produced with the public and the young people. I think it's super dope. Um, man, there's so what are you working on right now while we're in quarantine? Are you do you get a chance to paint even though you're working? Do you get to do those things? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I always have like probably too many projects going on. Um, I've been doing a lot of housework, but I, I always have like art, like on the easel or on the table that I'm trying to get through. Um, probably like one project that I really want to finish, two projects that I really want to finish this year are, um, a game board, uh, based on La Frontera on the borderlands. Mm. And I'll show you, I'll show you a sample of it right now. And the other project is a calendar of endangered, uh, Sonoran like Sonoran desert animals and creatures. Oh, very so, cool! I hope to have that the calendar ready for 2021, and the the game board hopefully by the end of the year. Um, want to see some of the game board stuff? Hell yeah! But wait a minute. Yeah. So you for the people that don't know, you're out there. You gotta study all this stuff, and you're still conceptualizing on top of that, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, the, the game board is, I put years and years of, of thought and work into it. Um, like, I'm embarrassed to say how many years ago, like, I started the game board probably five, six years ago. And I'm just now getting to the point where I can, I can say to, to somebody in public, to you, that I'm going to finish it this year. <laughs> it's awesome, though. That's what we, I mean, that's why we decided to do these interviews is because we don't ever get to see what the artist is working on or what they're doing. Or you know what I'm saying? So this is a little eavesdropping on you. So I, I'm excited yeah. to see what this game board looks like. Yeah, yeah. So here on, I posted a lot of the images on Instagram. Um, but like you and I had a conversation about how Instagram crops everything. Mm -hmm. And so everything is everything is in their format. You know, you can't control that. So you lose a lot of a lot of the feel of what, what the artwork is. But so I did for the game board I did eighteen little drawings. Well, this is one of them. Oh, wow. Um, they're all done with ballpoint pen in oh. red and blue. And um, the, 18, the 18 different drawings represent um, different aspects that allow you to go up or down the game board. And they all tie in with, um, with, real, life, with real life situations like that picture I just showed you was was kind of like um, fetish love between like yeah. Americans and Mexicans. And so like an Americano that falls in love with a Mexicana and like 
wants to marry her and then she comes to America, you know, like that will take you, <laughs> that will take you up the game board, you know? <laughs> and there's all kinds of like, there's a uh, El Coyote, the, the, the guys that bring you across, you know, like they bring you up into America, but they're also dangerous. So they, they bring you into a, like a kind of dangerous area. So you have a lot of chance of going back down the game board. So I, it, there's a there's a lot of concepts in it that tie in with like real world situations, and here I'll just I'll show you the game board. The game board is huge, and it's really detailed. I'm just going to um, show you a corner of it. Uh, wow, that's a, that's a buffalo like drowning in the blood of the American flag. Wow, that's a tonansin. She's like the 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 uh, Virgin Mary of the of the Mexica, and she's coming out of the Virgin Mary. <laughs> There's like Cortez and some like friar dude, and there's Guatemoc. Guatemoc's right there, like with his helmet off because he's beat, he's done. He's like handing over his his weapon to Cortez because they have the gold handle. So the whole game board, like. Like it just has a ton of iconography and symbolism. Well, man, that could be like actually, a teaching board, man. Yeah, like if anybody actually plays it, like you can you can dissect it as you're playing it. It'll be something to talk about while you're playing it, you know. So wait a minute, okay. What is the board game gonna be called? It's called uh, Frontera. Okay, and then let's see. I mean, how much is this gonna be? Because I need one of those. That's dope. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. Oh, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> it's based on, um, do you remember Snakes and Ladders? Yeah. Yeah, it's based on that. It's just a Snakes and Ladders game. Oh, and instead wow. of Snakes and Ladders, I'm using like, um, like Quesoquatl Serpents and, um, and like trains and planes and things that take you down and up, you know, because government planes and trains, you know, back into Mexico. <laughs> Man, that's amazing, dude. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're doing that, though. You know, because now's the time. And as a matter of fact, I hope that there's a lot of uh, artists out there. I mean, dude, I think we just witnessed history or something, right? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say I want to bring something up. So this piece, I submitted it to the TMA Biennial. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I want to bring that up because we were supposed to be getting our letters in the mail like this week or last week. And they just sent an email out saying that it, we're not going to get notified until the end of June now. So it kind of sucks because I've, I've been, um, I hate waiting for rejection and I've been rejected like, like for the past decade. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, for real. <laughs> but that's okay because, um, at least, the, at least they're just pushing it all back so that it, they can have the biennial, so that the artists that do get accepted can actually celebrate it. You know. Yeah, but you know what? Um, I thought that they they have in their permanent collection the print that you created of your your folks. They did. I didn't know you knew that. Yeah, they they <laughs> did. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did a print um, with uh, La Carpeta um, project project put on by Carl, and. Um, and I did a beautiful print of my nan and tata holding my dad and his brother in the F before they came uh, to America. It was 19, 1941 or 45 or something like that. And, um, and they bought a whole set of those prints. And out of those prints, um, they, put, they put my print and Dwayne's print up at the museum. And it was so cool to see it. I had a friend of mine told me that that print was up and I was like, I have art at the TMA, like, shut up. Like, they didn't even tell me. Like, I was like, I was blown away. That's very cool, though. And when you say Duane, is that Duano and Sano? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Just check. I know a couple Duanes. And there was something else you were going to produce and set out. What was that? Yeah, thanks for reminding me. So, the calendar. So, I'll show you. The, these are endangered animals. Oh, my God. And then I'm doing kind of like a like Aztec style like sculpture with each animal. I'll show you this. Uh, this is another one. 
Damn, dude. Again, we're, we're audience. We're witnessing history in the making. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got one more. There's going to be 12 of them, so here's one more. Right on. This is the Mexican gray wolf, and uh, these are cubs. And this one's kind of sad because, like, they're, like, crying for their mom because maybe she's away from the den or maybe she's not ever coming back. So, like, this one's kind of a, a heart tugger, you know? Yeah. So wait a minute. So when you use ink pen, was that just like a regular big pen? Um, these were, uh, these are graphite. So these are done with pencil. Those are, those are done with pencil. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> There's magic involved in that. Right. So, cause <laughs> those, those are I love illustration. Like as much as I love painting, like I always, I always come back to illustration, you know? Right. Well, I'm glad you do, man. We're we're benefiting from that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So, um, if somebody out there wants to check out your your artwork, what's the best place to look for it? So I I dropped my website years ago because nobody visits nobody visits websites anymore. <laughs> so I only use my I only use my Facebook. You know how you can have like your personal Facebook and like your art Facebook or your business Facebook. So I just use my Facebook and I have, I have all my artwork going back to about the year 2000. Oh boy. The Facebook and my Instagram. And I also have, I also have a blog that um, I mainly use for um, listing events and stuff. Yeah. So Instagram and Facebook is Ruben U Moreno and U is for Urea. Um, also I have uh, I have links on all my pages, so you can jump around from page to page. Yeah, you know what? Um, I got a chance to check out some more of your artwork because you started creating prints of your originals. But oh my god, dude! Like, um, you just have all sorts of series of work, like different works. What is that most recent stuff that I saw when we were at the Pascualaki um, car show? So. A lot of the series that you saw were were several years old. What are you drinking? That looks like a michelada too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Toast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like I ran out of tomato, and I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, those are those are from various series, and and I I guess um I guess if you're interested, I I work. I work through a series. So like, I don't just do like a random painting, like one right after another. I come up with a concept and it's a, it's a series. It's like an idea. It's all, they all tie together. And then I do as many as I can, like usually, usually about a dozen, sometimes more. Like my 1111 series when I made that in 2011, <laughs> I made 22 pieces of work for a solo show and that that killed me like I was there was a sculpture and 21 paintings and it was it was brutal like I had never like put my body through that kind of rigorous work yeah and, uh, what, what fuels that like what's the inspiration when you're like I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna that you actually execute it and you complete it like god like just an insatiable drive I don't know like I don't know, um, punishment? I don't know. <laughs> but it's hard. It, not only is it hard on me, but it's hard on people that live with me. And I, I've like, uh, I've figured that out. And so like, I've kind of, I've tamed my, I've tamed my workload down so that I'm not, I'm not so crazy when right. I'm going through those, through those phases of art creation. But they, sometimes they can't be helped you know deadlines and people invite you to things and you get excited for other projects and then all of a sudden you're you're in the mix of all these art projects and oh yeah you're just trying, trying to keep it cool that's good but most, what's your favorite me medium because i see you work with a lot of different stuff what's your favorite to work with oh my god um that's a hard question. That's a hard question. I, I will tell you this. I love to draw on birch, like mm -hmm. wood, like solid wood panel. And when I do that, 
I do a combination of like graphite and charcoal and I seal it and then I do crazy stuff on top. Like I'll, I'll, I'll throw some Prismacolor down to kind of block out colors and then I'll do some oil. Um, sometimes if I don't have that much time, I'll just work with acrylic. Um, so that in, in a nutshell is everything. It's like illustration. You know, I'm drawing first, yeah. and painting right on top of it. Um, so it's just a, it's a, a variety of, of mediums. But oil, I would say, I love to work with over, over any other kind of paint. Yeah, I'm like, oh, it's killer when you're blending and everything. I just trip out because I'm like, damn, when you start when you start looking at your work and the story and then you start seeing like, wow, Ruben put a lot of work into this. Like, it's really dope to look at. You know what I was checking out the other day was that you posted about uh, about this artist. Oh, yeah. Remedio Varos. Yeah. Yeah. So, dude. That's the like, book you told me about. Right? And for those of you out there who don't know, um, about Romantio Alvaro. Oh my God, it's trippy ass artwork. I received this book from Alfred Quiros and I had I had just come back from seeing it in LA with Frida Kahlo's work. So I was like, whoa. And then to see you in the, are these the type of artists that inspire you or how did you come across this artist? Um, so I, I found that artist on, on a vacation in my 20s. Um, I got I got to visit um, Ensenada, which is in Baja California, and I was in this little curio shop, and this the shop owner had all these reproductions of her work, and he was infatuated with her work, and like it caught my eye like right away because I had never seen any of her work, and he just started telling me all the different stories about her work and all the symbolism, and I bought these three little canvases, you know. And since then, like, well, I came home and I found her. And uh, then, like you, I got to see her work in person in Mexico City. Oh, and it was, a, it was a complete surprise. Like, I was just walking, walking my ass off one day. And I found a museum that it wasn't even on my radar. And I'm like, and I see, like, one of her paintings really big and her name. And it's, like, right now. And it's, like, I'm like, no way. Like, I went in and I got to see sketches of hers. and like it was amazing see those are the moments that i miss that quarantine has locked us in place because it's those adventures you were just wandering and you came across this whole thing those, those are the moments i miss but we have a question yeah. from the audience this is nathan I, I see that so nathan that's that's my bud um <laughs> what's up nathan <laughs> he wants to know if um if working at the museum arizona state museum has given me more insight to the region's history and uh and absolutely, like, I've been so fortunate to like work with many of like the tribal possessions that we take care of. And I've been able to like be around things that I never imagined that I would get to like be around at the museum. I mean, just think about it. They have over 2 million objects. I like, I like to call them possessions. Anyway, because <laughs> that's what they are, you know, they're not, like my headphones are objects, you know, <laughs> yeah. but um, just working with the curators and like getting to like read these, these highly customized specialized scripts that we put together for, for the public to make the exhibits, just that process of creating an exhibit. Like I learned so much, like I learned a ton about the Hopi, like right out of the gates when I got the job, like I hit the ground running we had this massive exhibit to put together with over 200 objects and I had to like make mounts and cases for all of them. And I was just like doing all this work and then, but also at the same time, like, like learning all this stuff about the Hopi and like working with like, like ancient objects, like, like I was working with this macaw um, skeleton that was like 300 years old. Wow. And it was a macaw skeleton from Central America that they found in Northern Arizona because there was like a trade route set up and they were bringing, they were bringing macaws up and they were like trading 
And they used to keep him as pets, you know, like, it was so cool. But someone else is asking, uh, what inspires your art, family, culture, life experience? Like, what, what is that? Um, a lot of it comes from, from my culture, like my, my roots. Yeah. I, I mean, my fam, I, I owe my family, like, especially my Nana, like I owe everything to her in regards of like becoming an artist. Oh, wow. She's the one that really nurtured, nurtured my art. Um, but she's also the one that like gave me access to, to like Aztec and Mayan culture. Like my first, like my first stories that, that I heard of of our roots were from my nana, like, in and not in like the like a real like native oral tradition, but in like this is this Mexican bakery calendar, and this is the story of like um, los mm -hmm. volcanes, and she knows it because she grew up in Mexico, so she, would, you know, it's kind of like mm -hmm. Mexican mm -hmm. pop culture to like for your nana to tell you the story the oral tradition of los volcanes, you know, and la mujer dormida, the sleeping woman. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Like we've been so far removed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've been so far removed from like our actual, like, like oral history that, that can be passed down because they got cut off. We have, we kind of have like a, a mixed bag made up like oral history now from like, Mexican pop culture and like calendars. <laughs> I know, right? But see, I feel like you being that living artist that's studying and learning, and uh, that you're contributing back to the history, so there's no disconnection. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. why. That's why it, it sounded funny, but it was being real. I'm like, we're making history today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that's real and it's living history. And and I thank you for that because a lot of times, um, as artists, you can get lost and doing different things and the the fact that you you come back and that's a an interest to you to share these stories these oral histories with everybody that's huge a lot of our nanas and tantas they're gone or they're or they're up there and as a matter of fact um this is the what is it the sixth song the sixth one like that's right that's right <laughs> you know, so I, maybe this i'm i'm excited to know that you might be inspired by that with the fact that um they witnessed the, the first half of the of, that's how, they went far into the future but now it's your turn you know you're gonna sit there and, and do that that work to share the next portion of that history you know yeah i i think i think as a, a collective like we like we all have to like feed into that that mythology because depicting depicting the history that we know that we that we've assembled with the little pieces that we we were able to like hold on to, we have to like we have to just keep tight of keep a tight hold of that and like and make sure it stays in the light and like give it new life by like depicting it in like our own imagination. Right? No, it's deep, dude. It's kind of it's kind of crazy out there. Like, I don't know. It, it's different times. It's like entertaining, but at the same time, I'm like, damn, is this the last chapter of the book? Are we living through? Like, oh my yeah, god! No. I I think a lot of us will make it through this. <laughs> <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> it, it, but you know what? That's why we're doing this. If this is the last run, this is how I want to play it out. I want to visit with friends like you and share with everybody that's been even in when we we're in the physical area you know be like hey what's up homie like and just hang out and be with each other you know but um yeah. but off subject of that because that's creepy who is it who are your like main top artists that you're like i love like you follow them like you're like that person inspires me and they is there somebody out there that does that like an artist um so a lot, God, and uh, somebody recently on Facebook challenged me to like post 10 artists that um, inspire me. So I've been doing that and I'm thinking about that a lot right now. And I'm, I'm kind of just, I'm kind of sad because a lot of the artists are dead artists. You know, they're like, they're, they're from, they're from a long time ago or um, like, I think, I think right now it, it's hard to pick one like living artist out because living artists are still like creating their legacy 
they're still creating their their like who they are right like um, you like alfred kiro i'm like damn oh which yeah. by the way since you're oh there was one more thing we uh, you were part of a um a print like they made like a small book for las puertas and you okay. did something that was i hadn't seen that come out of you as an artist but you even did you even told a, a story through a piece of art where you did the where you did the bl oh yeah that's right that's right the, yeah. i did i did this huge print for it was for barrio libre that's that's my home my mom's still there and um it was um it was cool the way they made that print we carved it on wood it was like four feet long what? and uh, they laid the paper down on the on the ground like on the middle of the street and then this is after of course we inked it up right and they laid the paper on the print and then they had a steamroller come and they like brrr, <laughs> like ran over the print no, yeah, dude. yeah and they did this in el paso and uh it was it came out beautiful like the, they did supposedly they're in the guinness book of world records or they're gonna apply for mm -hmm. it because they were like making like the longest like print tapestry in the world and they were gonna like hang it from the balcony in a stadium like i never saw pictures of it but uh that's supposedly one of my prints is going to be part of that project so, i wonder if it's at the chihuahua stadium who knows <laughs> i don't know <laughs> right? that, that's close to buoy high for um friends and folks out from uh hell paso <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but Oh. But I love the the story that you told in that piece because you threw up the you threw up the gang sign. You had the mujer. You had and then you had these. So, yeah, yeah. I had these had these crabs that were were symbolic of. Okay, so I had all these crab hands. They're all at the bottom, like my fingers are right here. And then I had this one crab like getting free from them, and it mm -hmm. had like a the Aztecs had a war shield and they had this, this symbol that they loved on the war shield and the crab, the back of the crab had that symbol on it. So symbolically, it was like, it was like an individual who was like rising above, like, like all the stuff in the hood that like brings you down, like drugs or like no jobs or like bad schools, you know, or, you know, police, like they just like, they patrol us more, you know, like, they don't patrol the foothills. So all those things like combined were all those little crab hands like trying to like keep you from getting away. And wow. so there's that one crab like getting free, like kind of a warrior crab, you know. Yeah, yeah, dude. That see, that's what I enjoy about your work is that it's not just, you know, it's like I love it, you know. It's like, yeah. oh shit, this guy was he was thinking about something and he and, and you it's like you put everything together and it's it's very awesome man i hope that folks out there that they actually get to go and check out your website your facebook your instagram and when all this is over that they actually get to see your work in person because it's like it's like super amazing but you know what else i noticed and this is different because i've met you in gallery spaces like um contreras raices i mean all the galleries, like, boom, boom, boom. And you, I knew you could tell your work. Um, but then I started, like, you, you like you were getting busy or doing your thing, you know, like, working and all this stuff. And then I noticed that I found you at more markets. How did you change that? How did you get into that? Um, actually, I have you, you and Melissa to thank for that. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, you two are just really inspiring. You're just always, like, you're always – you're always hustling you're always moving it and like you're always like just moving the waters around you know and i like that i love that energy and 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 you both of you invited me and i was like yeah let me get in on this finally like i just i need to do something like this and it was good it was like meeting people and talking more about art and getting to show like old art that i don't like have anymore like yeah. honestly 95 percent of my artwork is in the world like I have I have so little of my artwork in my house, um, mainly because I give it away cheap or I give it away. <laughs> yes, yeah, you know, you're but, amazing, dude. But yeah, um, I have you two to thank for that, and and I'm looking forward to getting back into that when when the world opens up, you know.
Me too. It, it's been really fun to host those things because then I seriously, it is so nice to, if because if, if there's anything that I can do to support my fellow artists, to have you up in this space like that, it was super dope because there's so many people that, that we don't just, we, we just don't run into. And the fact that they're starting to come in and check out what everybody's producing. Oh man, it was super huge for me because then I feel like, oh, like I almost like, I hope that I gave you something or that you, you, you got something from that, like some inspiration to continue to move forward. But I did. Oh, hold on. We, we have a question from Melissa here. Cool. She was talking about the Pascua, the park, the Pascua Arts Festival. Like when you set up there, like, was that your first one or is that? That was my first one. Uh, Gabriel Otero, um, he he helps. I think he basically runs that event. And um, he invited me and it was the first year that the they had opened that 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 up to uh, like non non like tribal members. And I just felt I felt so honored. I was like, yes, I would love to be there. Like, yeah, I'm there. Like, count me in. And it was it was really one of the most amazing like art fairs ever. Was it the energy just like different? It was it was like beautiful, like it like right? Yep. Like it was nice. It was beautiful. It was so comfortable there. Like it was the best it was the best art fair ever I, I ever experienced. Like just walking around and all the artists are like are cool, they're they're grounded, like everybody's family is there with the artists. Like everybody has a low writer. <laughs> <laughs> the food, the music, you know, everything was just was so cool about it. Like and I kind of feel like you and Melissa are like doing that like in the South Tucson, you know, you're doing your own little version of that little like the little the, the Mexican version of it, you know? Yep. Well, you know what? We were postponed. We were supposed to have an indigenous show that David Moreno puts together, the godfather out there. So Godfather yeah. You're listening in. We miss you. <laughs> yeah, miss you, David. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. it. We were just everything. It's still very nice. It's just that we were away from each other right now. But, um, I thought that. Oh, you know what? Because of this, okay. So, we were discussing this, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and ask Ruben about this, because you you're pretty level headed artist out there. What's oh, your strategy for the future? with this no contact and all this stuff and where are they like what are we supposed to do um that's a good question <laughs> i will tell you um a buddy of mine jared clark he wants to have a, a social distancing art show in a parking lot like the artwork will be in the parking lot and people will like walk on the sidewalk and that's one thing he's trying to put together and i was like well Count me in. I don't know if like how soon we can do that, but like that's I think I think what we have to do is is kind of like what you're doing with these chats. We have to like we have to come up with like super innovative things and ways to like show have exhibits and continue like continue creating and continue moving that energy around. It is so interesting to see just how the community comes together to try to help each other. So super glad that i'm in tucson I, you know i don't know how everybody else else is doing out there it's been pretty intense I have to, this is a personal question it's not too deep all right all right <laughs> what food are you missing right now is there any kind of food you're missing you're like i used to go out to this this place to get takeout what food are you missing right now main uh, just mainly tacos i'm just like look at this. <laughs> <laughs> like you can still you can still go and like to La Indita and like Sace and get tacos but is there something different about getting them at, at wherever you're ordering them like you know like tacos food? and so on and sitting down and, and eating them like those are my favorite and eating them hot like right there you know having like having all the the salsa bar stuff you know like I'm just missing that the most like the ambience of like Southside tacos, you know? you know. I like mixing them up. Unless it gets pissed, but it'll be like, all right, I want one of uh, the three pans. One of the <laughs> the and she's like, what are you doing? Like, but she would not make that just for me. So I got to go to you know? Yeah, the, you have to try the Lorenzo. That's, that mm. is like, 
so good. Dude, I, you know what? It's crazy because I'm like I'm like you. I'm, I I love the experience and hanging out. And now, here I want to. This is my this is my puppy right here. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he's cute. What's your yeah. puppy's name? Chipilon. Um, um, hey, you know what? Those are my favorite hot dogs on Twenty Second and Six. Chipilon. <laughs> <Chippy Lawn? laughs> <That's laughs> I haven't been there yet. I want to try that place. It's the bomb. I mean, they've been extending. They're like they started off as just a cart, and then all of a sudden they built a whole warehouse on wheels. I was like, damn, dude. But they're a, they're a go to spot for hot dogs for me on the sixth and twenty second. <laughs> but oh, let's see. Oh, bucket list mural. What's your bucket list mural? Oh my god. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. I don't. I have so many murals that that I want to do, but it's just a matter of having the time, you know, it's like really hard to do murals when you work full time, you know? Fantasize, man, fantasize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know I hope you get a residency in Mexico City and that's where you do that mural. And you come back and you share that story with the young people. We'll do another interview like that. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, dude. I, Actually, I'd, I'd like to work with other artists, too. You know, I think that's, I think mural experiences when you're working with other artists are, are great. So a collaborative mural, I would say a collaborative mural with, with more Tucson artists. Well, I would really enjoy doing that. That would be amazing. And you know what? Oh, look at this. Have you thought of about writing a book with your art? I have. Like, um, like doing kind of like a anthology of all my art um but uh, i'll get there i'll get there eventually yeah what if you ever did that book the anthology man i know they gotta carry it over at that uh, museum in chicago <laughs> well maybe after i die <laughs> no, 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 no. that's the thing that's the that's the part of that's my strategy in this game is um to uplift the living artists. So I, I'd be calling you all living legends, you know, and for a lot of people who are admirers, collectors, enthusiasts, or they're, you know, they're other artists, get out there and, and if you see Ruben, say, what's up, man? He's your living artist here locally. And I think that's amazing. And uh, being and having a business in the city of South Houston, um, a lot of discussions come up that I, I mean, I constantly kind of try to put it on them uh, that we need a cultural center. And the whole purpose behind that cultural center is to, um, you know, permanently collect your art, Alfred Kiros, and many others. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you, you guys are on my list as far as like as a like powerhouse of storytelling. Like, boom! So, oh my god, I I love when we talk about a cultural center because you and I have had this conversation many times. I'm like, this this town is so behind. Like, if there's any like people, big people out there with a lot of money that can push things around, like Tucson needs a cultural center so, so bad. Like, Speaking of why don't we have, like, a Chicano cultural center? Like, I don't understand what is wrong with Tucson. We're so close to the border. Well, I we know we have, a, we have a, a awesome mayor in the house, and I think that that would make us all feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to her, her mind, you know. But uh, there's some people out there. Nathan Saxton wants to know where he can send money for this book. So maybe you can <laughs> start thinking about that budget out there. And also, not, when are you going to do another book, um, Bicycle? Yeah, thanks, Nathan. He's always pushing me. Like, <laughs> I actually, Nathan, I actually have a bike right now. And it need, it's been kind of giving, like, guilting me because I, I need to do something with it. So um, I have some ideas. So. Whenever you put another bike themed art show on, I'll have another bike for you. How about that? That sounds like hey, everybody's holding us artists to the the, the dates because we're like, you got you're in quarantine, you do shit, you're at home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get with it. Get with it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like we're making tortillas or something. But I love it, man. And you know how you were mentioning collaborations between artists? Yeah. Trip out on this. Did you know about this collaboration? Dolly and Disney, yeah, <laughs> totally. So 
so Dali was going to do one of the cartoons for Fantasia. And they actually got some of it done conceptually. And it is so trippy. And I don't know what happened. Like, why didn't they just let that happen? Like, they, like, robbed the world of, like, a Dali animation. It was too deep, man. It was too deep. They couldn't get that far. You know what I mean? It yeah. was something. To, but I'm glad that they worked together because I think that working as two different artists together, that you could just end up blowing each other's minds. Never thought about that, you know? That's all right. That So Nathan's talking about a, a Lucha Libre bike. And he sold this to somebody in Canada. So that's really cool. Oh, um, man. Oh, and speaking of which, I want to I wanna show this off. So my primo in Sonora, Hermosillo, he got me this shirt, and it's actually signed. It says, to Ruben, it's signed by the son of Santos. Nah! So I wanted to put this. This I had this first time I wore this shirt. It's like my power shirt now. You got to make me <laughs> jealous, dude. I'm like, what? That's fine. That's dope. But you see, that's what I love about the artists. It's all about all the fun we have together. But hey, Ruben, this, you made this interview go really fast. Is it 30 minutes? Dang. Damn, but but you know what? It's all good. You know, my beers are waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what? I'm so glad that you took the time out for us to share with Dalali and Mitotera and the people out there in Instagram land that us artists are still working and you're getting down. And one more time, how can they find you? How can they get a hold of you? I'm on I'm on Facebook and Instagram under Ruben Hugh Moreno. And on those pages, I have links to my Redbubble and my blogger. And that's about it. Hell yeah. I encourage you not to let those things go because everything's the internet right now. Okay. I won't let them go anytime soon. I, I love it. Hey, <laughs> thank you again. Thank you, Mel. This this is awesome. Um, I love what you're doing with the community again. Like, I, I want to see more. I, I'm, I'm dying to see the next interview. I can't wait for it. Hell yeah. And you know what? We'll strategize on those murals. I'll talk to you later. Orale. <laughs> Orale. Gracias. Gracias.